Hello and thanks for joining us today on Culture. He's been called one of the most talented and inventive writers of his generation. His books Moth Smoke and The Reluctant Fundamentalist were both adapted for the screen. They explore the changes overtaking our world. His latest, Exit West, was cited by Barack Obama as one of the best books he read in 2017. It's just been translated into French. Let's meet Mohsin Hamid. Mohsin, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Now, you've been circling the idea of displacement throughout your career, throughout all of your books. Um, Exit West is a love story set against the backdrop of a civil war um, and a world where mass migration is normal. Why was it time to approach the subject now? I think I've been taking some of the anti-migrant backlash um, a bit personally. Uh, when I was three years old, I left Pakistan for California, moved back when I was nine, have since lived in the US and London. And uh, I'm a thoroughly mongrelized person. Um, and I wanted to explore the idea of migration not being strange, but being the basic condition of humanity. And a lot has changed in your three homes in the past couple of years, um, Britain, uh, the US, and without going into detail, I don't need to, I think people watching now, and Pakistan. Um, how are you feeling about the situations? Well, I think um, what we're seeing is uh, a lot of changes um, that appear to be quite negative. But when I travel around and speak to young people in particular, I tend to be quite optimistic. Uh, I was no fan of, of Brexit, um, but young Britons disproportionately didn't vote for Brexit. And I'm no fan of Donald Trump, but young Americans you know, didn't vote particularly for Donald Trump. Uh, and in Pakistan, too, if you go to university campuses, young people have much more uh, enlightened, cosmopolitan views, I think, than the older generation. So what we might be seeing isn't so much the beginning of a new conservatism, but uh, the last stages of an older conservative generation before it relinquishes power. That is positive. That gives me a bit of hope. Um, Exit West was published shortly after President Trump um, announced his revised travel ban. Uh, Pakistan isn't on it, but many Muslim countries um, are. What is the conversation like amongst your, your friends and family back in Pakistan about Trump's policies? Something very strange is happening in Pakistan, and not just Pakistan, but in many places in Asia and Africa that I travel to. Um, the U.S. had been very central to, I think, most countries' conception of the world. That's shifting. Uh, suddenly in Pakistan, what China thinks, how China views the world, the relationship with China is becoming incredibly important. So while there is a negative reaction, I think, to many of President Trump's policies, there's also a, maybe it's not so important anymore. And that is much more profound a shift than a, a temporary negative feeling towards U.S. policy. And Barack Obama, um, speaking about U.S. presidents, um, included Exit West in the list of um, one of his best books he read last year. What was that like? It was really cool. I found out um, on New Year's Eve uh, at a New Year's party in Lahore, and it, you know, I guess made my night. Uh, it was a wonderful way to start 2018. Um, and Obama is himself a writer. He's written uh, uh, two uh, very powerful books, and he uh, is a migrant. Um, he is of mixed parentage and has traveled the world and lived in Indonesia, Hawaii, mainland US. Um, so. I think of him as much like many people I know and, and myself. Well, Exit West has received rave reviews, not just from Barack Obama. Here's Jean Matern um, from your French publisher, Edition Grasset, talking about your writing. There are elements of what um, some critics call magic realism, actually, in his writing, because not everything is realistic in his writing. But what is striking is that um, he writes about a very, very political topic. It's about massive immigration to the Western world. Um, but it's also very much about a human topic, um, meaning um, he analyzes and describes how a couple deciding to immigrate to the West will or will not resist you know, actually to the, to the hardship of exile, of fleeing from your country. And, and that's also what makes the book so interesting. Now, the book has a lot to say about the migrant crisis, um, but about migration, but also um, as a more universal human phenomenon. Um, how do you think future generations are going to look back at this moment in history? 
I think we're on the cusp of a big change. Um, the notion that men and e women are equal and, uh, uh, you know, gay and straight people are equal or religious and non-religious minded people are equal is, is accepted in much of the world today. Uh, in the future, people are going to say that, you know, where you were born doesn't make you less equal. In a few hundred years, whether you were born in Birmingham or Lahore or Paris, you'll be thought of as being able to live anywhere. Uh, and so I think what we view as a crisis today is actually the birth of a new and better world. And we heard that um, the story is very real, the subject is very real, but there is a magical element to it. Um, Nadia and Saeed are looking for a way to leave their country and the way they leave um, is through magical doors. Um, it's a bit like the Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe. Yeah, there's something very Narnia about it. <laughs> um, why did you use these doors? I was in Pakistan uh, doing an interview, I suppose, like this one, but uh, via Skype or some other uh, video conference. And it was a strange feeling of looking at somebody halfway around the world and realizing how much of my life was connected in that way. I think technology is functioning to make distance collapse. People are aware of people all over the world. My kids are plugged into an online world where kids from everywhere are plugged in. And, and the doors are a, uh, they bend the laws of physics, but I think they're emotionally true to what living in our technological moment feels like. And has anyone challenged you about these doors, saying, you know, like the migrants, um, the journey they're taking, it's not just going through a door, it's quite a suffering, long suffering process. Have people criticized you for that? I think people uh, certainly have made that uh, observation. It wasn't my uh, attempt to uh, diminish the, uh, the suffering that occurs and the trauma that occurs on that journey. But I think very often we use the journey as a way to say that these migrants are different from us. Like I haven't crossed the Mediterranean in a small boat or I haven't crawled underneath the US border and the barbed wire there. So these people are different. But actually migrants um, were in a place, something made them want to leave and they arrived in a new place. And that part of their story is universal and can be shared by everyone. So my attempt was less to say this doesn't matter how they get from place to place but rather to make us feel that they are not different from us at all. And in the book, um, you imagine a hopeful and positive outcome to large scale um, immigration. How important is, you, is it for you, for your writing, to take part in the conversation for change and what's happening in the world? I think it's really important. Uh, right now, what we're seeing is a kind of pessimistic politics everywhere. And that pessimistic politics is nostalgic. Like, let's make America great again. Let's make Islam great again. You know, let's make Britain uh, great again by taking back control. Uh, these are all sort of nostalgic views, and they're born of the fact that we're not articulating something for the future that is exciting that we can look forward to. Uh, and I'm hoping to start to talk about a world that's coming into being that actually will be better for our grandchildren than what was before. Uh, and even if at the moment we seem very frightened by migration, uh, I suspect that our grandchildren will think of it as completely normal and be very happy to be dating their Brazilian or Pakistani or Chinese uh, partner and eating food from all around the world. Where's your home then? Uh, I live in Lahore. Uh, I have a strong tie to London, to New York, to California. I feel a little bit unsettled everywhere, but I can kind of make my way in many places. But uh, I suppose I'm adrift uh, internally, even if at the moment grounded in Lahore through my family. And um, several of your works have been made um, into films or into a mini-series. Your first novel was Moth Smoke that was made into um, a TV series in Pakistan, an operetta in Italy, and The Reluctant Fundamentalist was made into a movie um, with Kate Hudson. Exit West is also going to be made into a film. When you're writing, how aware, of you, aware are you of that possibility? I'm not particularly aware because most of my books are very hard to adapt to film. They're really bookish books. Um, Exit West might be somewhat easier, but uh, you know, converting uh, Doctrine Fundamentalist into a movie was a nightmare. Did you uh, like it? Yeah, I liked it. I mean, it's, it's very different from the book. Um, that book is incredibly ambiguous. Uh, you don't know what is happening. You have to decide as a reader. The film resolves that ambiguity, but the film also is an Indian director, Mira Nair, working with British Pakistani lead Riz Ahmed, actors from all over the world like Kiefer Sutherland and Kate Hudson and Leah Schreiber um, on a story about a Pakistani protagonist. And the fact that you can make a beautiful work of art with these people from all over the world is exactly the kind of thing that I believe in. <laughs> um, so even though the film is different, spiritually it's kind of close to the book, I suppose.
OK, well, we always wrap up um, with our guests' cultural pick. And what have you chosen for us today? I've uh, chosen a, a wonderful uh, 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 art exhibition uh, called Infinity Mirrors that I saw at the Hirshhorn Museum in Washington, D.C. OK, and why have you chosen it? Uh, sometimes you step into a space or into an artistic uh, creation and your sense of what life is and what's around you totally changes. Uh, I say sometimes, but basically almost never. Um, uh, <laughs> and, and, and sometimes because of, of shows like this. Uh, she's arranged lights and mirrors in such a way that you step into um, spaces that feel like being in outer space but outer space as imagined by pixies um, or some mushroom-inspired fantasy. And you're not just observing, you're present within. It is really um, mind-altering. OK, well, Mohsen, thank you so much um, for joining us. And that exhibition, Infinity Mirrors, um, can next be seen in Ontario um, in March. It is a travelling exhibition. And your book, Exit West, has just been translated into French. Remember our website, we're also on Twitter and Facebook. There's more news coming up on France 24 after this.